as we know, uh, nowadays the land, the network of the local area is mostly built on the Ethernet, on the technology of Ethernet. And the Ethernet, we know, we can implement it by different technologies, by different physical medias. Okay. Um, the most simple, most originally, we use the coaxial cable, just one line, no device. And then all the host is connected to this cable using the NIC, using the network interface card. And as we know, only one device can send data at one time. If more than one device is sending data at the same time, then the collision happens. Okay, so we need to use the CSMA CD mechanism to avoid the collision. Okay, and uh, after that, we introduced uh, a device we call the hub. The hub is worked on the physical layer. Okay, the hub will still sending the signals, just threading the signals from one interface to all other interfaces. So between the host, the collision still will happen. Okay, but the hub is a centralized device. It's more easy to troubleshooting if the network errors happen, okay? This is the hub. And then, after that, we introduce the switch. The switch is worked on the data link layer. Okay, the switch divides the collision domain based on the interface. The one interface, one switch interface is one collision domain. Okay, so the collision will not happen between hosts that are connected to a switch. Okay, and then the switch still have mechanisms to forwarding the data frame. Where to forwarding the data frame? Have the decision process, okay. And then in this chapter, we will discuss how the switch is worked. And also we will discuss how to configure an Ethernet switch interface. Okay, then we just see the topology. This is the most simple network that only contains one switch, okay? One switch construct a LAN. Then there are the three hosts connected to the switch, okay? The interface gigabit 001, gigabit 002, and gigabit 003. Of course, each host have the IP address and the MAC address. As we know, the IP address is the layer 3 address, and the MAC address is the layer 2 address. And as we know, the switch located in one network. So, the IP address must be located in one network, okay? In the same network, but have the different host part, okay? The network part is the same. Of course, the physical address, that's a MAC address, it's a burning address burning in the NIC network interface card of each host. Okay, so they must be different. Okay, then when a host, for example, host A wants to send the data to host B, host C, okay, then what will happen? As we know, the host A must know who he wants to communicate. So the host C must be told the destination 10, 1, 1, 3, okay? Must get this information. And the source IP address and the source MAC address must be this, okay? The source IP address 10, 1, 1, 1, okay? This is uh, in the IP header, okay? But when the data wants to send it out, should encapsulate by the Ethernet frame, okay? In the Ethernet frame, there's another two information, the destination MAC address and the source MAC address. The source MAC address is easy, just as the MAC address of its NIC card, but the, who is the destination MAC address? What is the destination MAC address? And then, first, the hot A, Wants to send data to host C. But host A did not know the MAC address of host C, so cannot encapsulate the data. And then, 
the switch 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 A also there is a mechanism to decide how to how to send the date. So the switch A worked at the data link layer. Data link layer we have the MAC address. So switch A will maintain a MAC address table, a MAC address table. But initially this MAC address table is empty. Okay, is empty. And then because the host A did not know what's the destination MAC address of host C, then the host A we are using the ARP process. We have already discussed address resolution process. Okay, address resolution protocol. Okay, this protocol then sending a broadcast, sending a broadcast to the network. Okay, then the source MAC address of course, it's itself. Okay, then the switch A receives this frame. Then we'll know, okay, the host A, the, this MAC address is connected to this interface. So this information will be recorded into the MAC address table. Okay, and then the switch will also decide which interface will this frame forwarding out? Then see the destination MAC address. The destination MAC address is a broadcast at all once. Then this frame we are forwarding out all the other interface. We call this method we call flooding. Okay, we are flooding out all the other interface. So the, when I switch. Flooding out, then host B and host C will receive this frame. And uh, the destination of the layer two is O1. So each host will receive, will receive, will accept, will accept. And then after the layer two accept, this packet will forwarding to the app layer protocol. The app layer protocol is the ARP. The ARP said he wants to resolve the MAC address of this IP address, 10.1.1.3, okay? So, the how to be seen, the, the resolved, the IP address needed to resolve is not mine. So, the host B just drop this ARP request. But the host C will see that the IP address needed to resolve, it's my IP address. So how to see, we are sending out a reply, okay? Sending out a reply. But when sending out a reply, the how to see knows from the source MAC address of the request, ARP request. This is the host A requested, okay? so. The host C not sending back a broadcast, sending back a unicast. Okay, unicast. The unicast, the destination of this unicast is the host A's MAC address. Okay, and then the source is the host C's MAC address. Then, when this packet is sending out, this frame is sending out, then switch A receives it. Then switch A knows the host C's MAC address is connected to gigabit 003, okay? So, the MAC address table grown, okay? Then, there are two items in the MAC address table. And then, the destination MAC address of this frame is this address. Then, this is unicast, the switch A. We are looking up this address into the MAC address table and I found that this destination just this MAC address, okay? So, this MAC address is connected to gigabit 001. So, this frame only forwarding out to this interface, not forwarding out gigabit 002, okay? This is difference from the broadcast. The broadcast is spreading out all the other interface, but the unicast will find the destination in the MAC address table, and then only forwarding out 
the certain interface, the corresponding interface, okay? This is the ARP process. After the ARP process, then host A knows the destination IPs corresponding MAC address. So the host A can encapsulate this. This is the source is dot one dot one dot one and the destination is dot one dot one dot three. Okay? And then MAC address. The source MAC address just as itself, AA, okay? And then the destination, just a CC, okay? That this package can be sending out as a unicast. And the switch A receives this unicast, then finding the destination, destination is CC, then corresponding to 0, 0, 3. Of course, the source is AA, then refresh this item, okay? Of course, it's the same. Refresh the item and then forwarding out gigabit 003. Of course, the hot C sending out is the same. Okay, this is the process. How the switch forwarding the unicast? Okay. And then uh, this is the basic con con configuration of the switch. The process of the switch forwarding the data and the meeting the MAC address. It's work by default. This mechanism is default. We did not need to configure, okay? Not need to configure. But as we know, the Ethernet, the original Ethernet is the 10 mega Bps, okay? And uh, then we invented the fast Ethernet. That's the 100 mega Bps, okay? Bps. And then, nowadays, most widely used is the 1 gigabps, okay? 1 gigabps, of course, there's 10 gigabps and so on. And nowadays, the device connect to the switch. This switch is, uh, the speed is adaptable. That means this interface can, this is a gigabit interface. That means it can running on one gigabit BPS. But also, this interface can also running on this speed, also running on this speed, 10 mega, 100 mega, also can work. And then, another method, as we know, in the coaxial cable and in the hub, the collision will happen. So, only one device can send in the data at the same time. So, all the device, if it's sending, so there's must, there's no other device is sending data, okay? So, this mode we call the half duplex. Only when itself, it's a stop sending, then there will be data sending, received, okay? This is sending and receive, not happen at the same time. But now, there's a switch. And the co this is a twist pair. Twist pair, there's eight lines in one Ethernet line, okay? So there's two, one pair is for sending and one pair is for receiving. So the host and the switch can sending and receiving the data at the same time. This mode that we call four duplex. This mode that we call half duplex. Half duplex. And uh, this mode we call four duplex. Okay, four duplex. And then we have two parameters need to configure on the interface. Okay. If this interface is running on which speed, and uh, if this interface is running on which mood, four duplex or half duplex, of course we can configure it. Okay, based on the nick type of the host. Then we can configure on a switch. But also, we developed another mechanism we call the auto negotiation. Auto negotiation. By default, the switch interface are all enabled the auto negotiation. So the switch will negotiate with the host connected to this interface. Which speed we should be running and which duplex mode we should run in. Okay. Uh, so, 
by default, you did not need to configure the Ethernet interface. Okay, that switches interface. But if you need to configure it manually, you can configure this. First, you use the undo negotiate auto to disable the auto negotiation. Okay, then the switch will not negotiate with the host. Okay, and then you specify the duplex mode and the speed manually. Okay, this is a gigabit. That's the one stolen megabps. Then the speed is changed to 100 megabps. That's the fast Ethernet. That's the fast Ethernet speed. And then your brakes mood is the full. Yeah, you can specify manually. Okay, this is the basic configuration of an Ethernet switch interface. Okay. Then after your configuration, you can check it. If your configuration is uh, uh, is taking effect, okay, you can use the display interface, then the interface type and interface number, the gigabit Ethernet 001. And then there are many informations, and there are also the speed and the duplex mood. Okay, then also negotiation, auto negotiation is disabled. Okay, the mood of the auto negotiation. Okay, that we got the end of this chapter, and then there are the questions. If a switch Record the source MAC address of a host device on a port interface. And the physical connection of this host is then changed to another port interface on that switch. What action will the switch take? That means one host originally connected to one interface of the switch, and then this host disconnects from this interface, and then move to another interface, connected to another interface. So. First, if this host disconnects the, to the switch, then the switch interface will be go down, okay? The switch, if the switch interface is go down, then the switch maintains the MAC address table. First, we'll delete all the MAC address learned from this interface, okay, from the MAC address table. And then, if the host move to another interface, then the switch will learn the MAC address from that interface, from that app interface. Of course, only when the host is sending out the first frame, then the switch can learn the source MAC address from this interface. Okay, 